so sad. I know not why I am so sad. We are reason. You say, where is you? How I came by it, caught it, found it. What stuff it is made of, where of it is born, I am yet to know. Such a want with sadness makes me that I have much ado to know myself. Your mind is tossing on the ocean. There where your artists with portly sails to overpeer the petty chanters that curtsy to them, do them reverence as they fly by them with their woven wings. Believe me, sir, had I such venture forth, the better part of my affections mm. would be with my hopes abroad. Every object that might make me fear misfortune to my ventures, out of doubt would make me sad. Mm. The wind cooling my broth would blow me to an ague oh. when I thought what harm a wind too great at sea might do. But tell not me. I know Antonio is sad to think upon his merchandise. Oh, believe me, no. My ventures are not in one bottom trusted, nor in one place, nor is my whole estate upon the fortune of this present year. Therefore, my merchandise makes me not sad. Hmm. Why? Then you are in love. <laughs> fie, fie. <laughs> not in love, neither. Then let us say that you are sad because you are not merry. And it is easy for you to laugh and leap and say you are merry because you are not sad. <laughs> ah, here comes Bassanio. Your most noble kinsman, Gratiano and Lorenzo. <coughs> Fare you well. We leave you now with better company. I'd have stayed until I had made you merry if worthier friends had not prevented me. Oh, your words is very dear to me. I take it. Your own business calls on you, and you will brace the occasion to depart. Ah, uh, good ladies, both. When shall we laugh? Say, when. You are exceedingly strange, must it be so? Mm. We'll make our leisure to attend on yours. <laughs> <laughs> but all of a Sanio, since you have found Antonio, we too will leave you. But at dinner time, I pray you, have in mind where we must meet. I will not tell you. Signor Antonio, you look not well. You pay too much respect upon the world. They lose at the Dubai with much care. Believe me, sir, your mind is changed. I hold the world without the world, Rexiel. A stage where every man must play his part. And a mine is sad. Let me play the fool. With mirth and laughter let old wrinkles come. And let my liver rather heat with wine than my heart cool with mortifying groans. I love the Antonio and it is my love that speaks. There are a sort of man whose visage is too cream and mantle like a standing pond and do a willful stillness entertain to be dressed in an opinion of wisdom, gravity, profound conceit, as to who should say, I am Sir Oracle, and when I open my lips, let no dog bark. <laughs> oh, I do know of these, of these that are therefore only reputed wise for saying nothing, but I am very sure if they should speak, would almost damn those ears, which hearing them would call their brothers fools. <laughs> I'll tell thee more of this another time, but fish not with this melancholy bait, this fool gudgeon, this opinion. Come, good Lorenzo, I'll end my exhortation after dinner. Well, we will leave you then till dinner time. I must be one of these same dumb wise men, for Graziano never lets me speak. Uh, keep me company but two years more. Thou shalt not know the sound of thy own tongue. <laughs> yeah. Is that anything now? Graziano speaks an infinite deal of nothing. More than any man in Venice. His reasons are as two grains of wheat among two bushels of chaff. You shall seek all day or you find them, and when you have them, they're not worth the search. <laughs> well, uh, tell me now what lady is the same to whom you swore a secret pilgrimage that you today promised to tell me of? Tis not unknown to you, Antonio, how much I have disabled mine estate by showing a more swelling port than my faint means would grant continuance. To you, Antonio, I owe the most, in money and in love. And from that love, I have a warranty how to unburden all my plots and purposes. How to get clear of all the debts I have. <coughs> and if it stand, as you yourself do, within the eye of honor, be sure, my purse, my person, my extremist means, by all unlocked to your behavior. Therefore speak. In Belmont, there is a lady, and she is fair, and fairer than that word of wondrous virtues. Sometimes from her eyes I did receive fair, speechless messages. 
Her name is Portia. Nothing undervalued to Cato's daughter, Brutus Portia. Nor is the wide world ignorant of her worth, for the four winds doth blow from every coast renowned suitors, and many Jasons come in quest of her. Oh, my Antonio, had I but the means to rival place with one of them, I have a mind presages me such thrift that I should question this be fortunate. Thou knowest that all my fortunes are at sea. Neither have I money nor commodity to raise the present sum. Therefore go forth, see what my credit can in Venice do. That shall be right, even to the utmost, to furnish thee to Belmont, to fair Portia. Go, presently inquire, and so will I where money is. And I no question make, to have it for my, my trust, or for my sake. <laughs>